Alrighty, well, hey there, Golo. Hey, thank you so much for making some time to chat. I'm super excited to get a chance to meet you. And look, honestly, I've been trying to spread the word about the awesome new, hey, threat intelligence and all the awesome telemetry that you had shared and offered previously with the IBM X Force and their threat intelligence index for 2024, looking back on 2023. Uh, yeah, I know. I feel like you've been a part of that. But can you tell me, even before we dive into that, just a little bit about yourself, what you're up to, what's going on these days? Yeah, sure. So thank you very much for having me. Um, I'm a malware reverse engineer over at IBM X Force, and yeah, so we do a lot of different kinds of uh, thread research. That's sort of the team where I'm working in, and we track pretty much everything from from cybercrime over to various different phishing campaigns and nation state attacks. So yeah, we try to keep a whole picture of the thread landscape. And um, yeah, that's where I'm about with a focus on malware, of course. Super cool. Can I ask, had you been much a part of that intelligence report coming to life? Is that something that you got to hey, be part of firsthand? Or where was yeah. that in your inner worldview? Yeah, definitely. So I mean, obviously, with it being such a large report, uh, we have tons and tons of individuals involved from all over X-Force. Since I've been working on the thread research side, side of things, during the year, we publish a lot of different blogs and thread reports, and a lot of that also makes it into, into the Thread Intel Index. And I've also been involved in a lot, all of the different data sources we look at, right? So phishing campaigns, uh, what happens in IoT, uh, all those kinds of stuff. That's fascinating. Are there any sweet... I don't know, maybe juicy behind the scenes details on how that all comes to life. Are there any crazy stories for thinking, oh, we got to get this in or no, we can't put that <laughs> in. Or, <laughs> yeah, it's definitely always a lot of a, a discussion. It, it's a long project. I bet we're going to start soon again. So uh, we start normally mid-year with the first data pool where we look at all the data across what X-Force is doing, everything from red team engagements over to the various incident responses we do all over the world, right, in various geographies and industries. And then we pull together all of that data and discuss and look at trends. And then throughout the year, we have multiple further data pools where we just go over sort of what are the trends we've seen and have they really, really come to life? Do we, do we, do we see that as a full year trend? That was going to be my next question, honestly, was, hey, how long does this thing sort of take? You mentioned you start mid-year or the start, or how long is this whole endeavor? <laughs> it's sort of, yeah, I'd say about nine months of work right, with uh, various different leads for the projects being involved. But there's a whole other team behind, right, working behind the scenes, uh, team behind the, the curtain on legal and comms and PR marketing who, who work to uh, to make this all happen. And yeah, a lot of people, a lot of moving parts. <laughs> Goodness. Well, I got to admit, I am most interested in hey the, the technical aspect, the substance, what's really in there. And I, I'm excited to get your opinion, especially, hey, digging into this day in and day out. I think the report does a phenomenal job touching on a like a wide variety of subjects between info stealer malware, initial access, hey, credential, just logging in when you don't even have to break in, uh, cloud and identity attacks, even some artificial intelligence in the mix. Are there any of these, if I may ask you, are there any of these that you are the most worried about? Do some feel more sinister than others? What ranks high in your mind? <laughs> Yeah, so I think at the very top definitely uh, would be the increase in info stealers. That is one of our biggest concerns at the moment, right? It's been a huge increase, 266%. Uh, that's something special. And I mean, the special thing here is that info stealers, as you know, have been there for quite some time. But what, what happened this year is we've seen big players adopt it, and that hasn't been the case for a long time. Can you color that anymore? Or hey, yeah, yeah, any sure. Or the big players that we're up against? <laughs> So, so the the players we've been tracking is um, what we call ITG twenty three. ITG being IBM Threat Group. And that group is also known as the TrickBot Group or XConti. Yeah. And they've been involved with a lot of ransomware, right? And what they traditionally used to do is they have their own custom malware, right? Think of QuackBot, all starting with Emotet, TrickBot, ISID, all of that. And that's sort of where, where they worked off on. But now this year, we've seen them use more and more info stealer types in their attacks. And that's something rather unusual. And the way we track it is we look at cryptors. Um, cryptors 
just as a short explanation, that is a tool you use to create binaries in which you can encrypt or compress or otherwise obfuscate your payloads in, right? And then you deploy them as a loader. And that loader basically has the job of getting past uh, EDR solutions, antivirus, stuff like that. And that's why they're most uh, mostly very, very sophisticated, right? They go through a frequent code changes. The special thing about the ITG23 cryptos are they are sold, but only to some very close relationships. And that's sort of a good indicator of how you can track uh, which group uses which kind of malware. And we've never seen ITG23 cryptos used on info silos before. And normally, as I said, on Quackbot, ISID and the likes. And that has been a huge change. That's wild. I think it goes to show a little bit of, hey, just how commoditized this has become. And uh, exactly uh, as you say, hey, just sold at least in private groups and sort of the in exclusive affiliate circuit. That, that's wild to me. I, I, I hear it. I see it. I see a lot of the info stealers just as well. Uh, I know that, goodness, that's certainly up there. Are there any others you think are, I don't know, some top dogs, some of the head honchos to worry about? Yeah. So apart from cybercrime, we are obviously also tracking nation state mm -hmm. threat actors. And that has also also been quite an interesting development, definitely. What we've seen is ever since the start of the war in Ukraine, we've seen these threat actors clearly adopt a more aggressive or a more blatant approach. And that is for me one of the most worrying things, right? If you combine a war with, with a cyber attacks. And that is where, where it all becomes real. And some of the attacks we've witnessed, so in the past, I know um, as a threat researcher, is it's very hard to find research on real high-level APT threats, um, especially nation state. But some of the groups we track, for instance, High 51, which is also known as Gamma Redon, that has been a very, very active threat. I would even say one of the most active nation state threats. And we've also uh, published uh, quite a few bits on them. And the same goes for other actors in the region, such as APT28, which we track as ITG05. So yeah, that's definitely something we need to be on the watch and um, various kinds of conflicts in the world sort of influencing cyber attacks. I feel like I always forget about that component. I, and I know it makes complete imperfect sense just because it's the the world. But I feel like I, I especially, and I don't know if maybe you or others tend to feel like, hey, I just get so wrapped up on the keyboard and just doing, look, the software, the, the the zeros and ones, the bits and bytes, forgetting, hey, there's a whole real world out there with its own problems and things to, to consider. But goodness, can I ask, and maybe I know it's a hot topic and sometimes a bit of a buzzword, depending on how we slice and dice it, but everyone's chatting about artificial intelligence and AI. Uh, I know when you put that against the backdrop of cybersecurity, things can get a little bit weird. Can I ask, what's your hot take or what do you think? Uh, how do you see artificial intelligence sort of fitting in here? Yeah. I mean, that's a question we get asked a lot, <laughs> right? How does AI fit into malware landscape? Um, and from my view, honestly, I think AI is being quite a bit overhyped here. But we still need to define, right, what is AI in malware? And I would say that is something like where malware actually uses AI technologies during execution or it's pre-trained. It does some funky stuff like dynamically avoid antivirus based on AI stuff. And that's all stuff we are still far away from, right? And these things, I think they mirror very closely what happens in software development. So malware development is just another form of software development with very obvious motives. But um, <laughs> I, I still think if, if we look at software development in general, we don't don't have a lot of apps using AI everywhere. So when that starts to, to happen, I think that will also result in malware. But what we see in software development is AI and, and generative AI being used to supplement the whole development process, right? Creating small code code tidbits, right? Small stuff um, and, and sort of enabling uh, developers to, to create code. And I'm pretty sure that that's already used in malware as it is today, but that's not something we would notice, right? It's just sort of helping the same thing. But on that note, I, I'm, I must admit, one thing we definitely need to be careful about when it comes to AI this year is phishing, because that is something that we know is possible already and is probably already used with large language models easily being capable of creating very authentic phishing emails, right, cloning voices, deep fakes, you name it. And that is something we definitely have to be on our guard and, and we keep our eyes peeled and try to see what happens here. I'd agree. That's something I am especially spooked by is I don't know, just the potential for like, look, I've got thousands of recorded content and material out on the public internet.
internet. Someone could, I don't know, just as easily spin up a deep fake or clone of me. Uh, and that's weird. Uh, and I know, look, that's just genuinely a very real threat on the horizon. With that said, I know we just released IBM and X-Force's new threat intelligence report, but uh, what might be coming up in the future if, the, I don't know, I don't, I know we don't have a crystal ball, can't see the future, not Nostradamus, but do you have any predictions? Are there any trends, anything we could speculate on what's next year going to look like? For this year specifically, I mean, it's, it's pretty clear this year is election year. So um, yeah. there are all kinds of elections, not just in the in the U.S., right, but also Brazil, Russia, India, South Africa, and a lot of other nations as well. And we definitely anticipate attackers trying to leverage those AI technologies we talked about, right, imitation, phishing, to sort of play the deceptive game and try to work off that. And cyber criminals as well, right. And um, yeah, looking at sort of more general perspective of trends we are seeing, which we anticipate for next next year, and I think that's also in our Threat Intel index, is the whole point of carrier files. A carrier file, that's something we define as files which carry maliciousness, but they are not specifically malware, right? Not necessarily by themselves. And that's something that can easily help with infection chains. So the point, the whole point here is sort of them using long chains of these legitimate carrier files in very long infection chains to load malware without actually creating any malicious activity until the very end. And that is something we've seen throughout last year, and that's something we definitely anticipate throughout. And I don't want to hit too deep into buzzword territory, but I think it's a bit like zero trust for malware, right? Because in the past we had, uh, for instance, PDFs. And you can't trust PDFs with URLs anymore, right? Those are heavily used by PikaBot, QuackBot, iStudy, you name it, this year, right? Same goes for documents. Great, Windows blocked macros, but but that doesn't mean you can you can trust documents without macros, right? We have huge numbers of exploits, techniques such as remote template injection, right? And we see those techniques being used every day against the Ukraine, for instance, by High51. And yeah, that doesn't apply to, to just to malware, right? Also URLs, we have seen an increase in web hoster, public web hosters, public cloud cloud URLs, TDS, and something like, I mean, APT28 has been using web hosters a lot, but all the way to, to Latin America, right? Think of Latin threat actors, um, the ones like distributing various kinds of banking trojans. They heavily use these public cloud URLs. And that's actually very interesting because it's hard to detect and hard to block. And um, for me, though, the, the most scary thing about the whole sort of uh, zero trust for malware is that you can't even trust your own system executable anymore, right? I mean, living off the land binaries, that's that's just become such a common technique everywhere, right? We have lots and lots of exploits for stuff like Outlook. Again, APT28 using Outlook to leak NTLM hashes and the same for Windows File Explorer, which they used a, a weakness in to, to load payloads, various different kinds of stuff. And this is an overall trend we've seen, right, to, to use these legitimate techniques in long infection chains. I think they are so hard to to defend if you don't know what you actually have to look for. Well, goodness, there is so much out there. And hey, if anything, yeah, it's the it's the impetus and the new motivation to go better defend and go better protect and board up the windows and the doors, right? The best that we can. Well, hey, what is IBM X Force up to next? Uh, I don't know if it feels like a weight's off the shoulders getting the report out the door, uh, but I'd love to learn a little bit more about your teams and what you're all up to. Yeah, um, so we do... As I said, uh, we, we do a lot of different stuff. We, from the threat intelligence side, we publish tons of reports uh, almost weekly on all in all kinds of different formats. So that'll be everything from like really deep dives into malware, threat actors, specific campaigns. But uh, we, we also do, do stuff like what we call flash reports, which just like give me the IOCs, quick one day turns, IOCs, what's happening, geography, industry, and how what, what can I do about it, right? What is that small little detail that I can hunt on or detect on that makes these seemingly legitimate file formats or seemingly legitimate behaviors malicious, right? And that's something we focus on the custom recommendations, which we also include in our blogs. But yeah, apart from thread research, right, we do incident response engagements, which are also part of X-Force and red teaming. And yeah, all year long, I mean, we have a lot of hackers as well at, at X-Force, which just, you know, they like to play around with uh, phishing and, and AI and try to see which kind of
of new techniques and which kind of funky stuff they can come up with and and weaponize. So, yeah. Well, hey, I know I am just a mere outsider looking in, but hey, from my perspective, you all are always doing incredible stuff. I, I have genuinely really a uh, certain admiration for the great stuff that you all do. So hat tip to you uh, and kudos Thank on you. all the fantastic work, uh, especially with goodness, this threat intelligence index with the report, with all the telemetry and threat intelligence we could share. For anyone listening in, how could they, I don't know, get their hands on the report or how could they learn a little bit more about IBM X-Force? What's the call to action here? Yeah, you can just go to ibm.com slash X-Force, download the report, but also please feel free to take a look at our blog at securityintelligence.com slash X-Force. And that's where you'll find all kinds of different reports we publish. And um, that's also basically where you can learn a little bit more about X-Force. Excellent. Well, hey, seriously, I can't say it enough. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think the whole community really levels up and the whole industry and the cybersecurity landscape gets a little bit better when we are sharing all this incredible intel and hey, getting us all stronger and smarter. So thank you again and again. Yeah, that's our job. <laughs> Golo, this has been awesome. <laughs> it's been wonderful chatting with you. Uh, thank you so much for taking some time and I hope we'll keep in touch. <laughs> thank you very much. Definitely.